Hello, it's Dr. Macho for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. In the previous lecture, we talked about the 2016 guidelines on diastolic dysfunction, and now we continue with all the specific situations you might encounter when you assess feeling pressures. Well, the first situation, and this is the situation you always have to find, is the so-called diastolic dysfunction grade 3 with definitely elevated feeling pressures or the restrictive feeling. This specific case, you measure first the E to A ratio, and if it is 2 or above 2, we have grade 3 diastolic dysfunction. But be aware, this is the case in sick left ventricles. If you have a young, healthy individual or someone who does a lot of sports, the E to A ratio can be above 2, which simply is supranormal because the heart is not stiff but very elastic. In the case of restrictive feeling, the heart or the left ventricle is very stiff and the feeling pressures are definitely elevated. How does it look like in a patient case? Here you have a case of a patient with a restrictive feeling. The E to A ratio is definitely above 2, which equals elevated feeling pressures. When we think about how diastole looks like in case of the measurements of the pulse wave Doppler we take, we have to see that the E wave is way larger than the A wave. And if the ratio is above 2 or 2, we have diastolic dysfunction grade 3 restrictive feeling. The next steps, they are not really mandatory, but if you want to prove that this is really restrictive feeling and significantly elevated feeling pressures, you have to measure the E to E prime. It's not mandatory, but it has to be significantly elevated. So a situation where you have this E to A ratio above 2 or 2 and you have an E to E prime of 6, for example, that cannot be a restrictive feeling. So always keep in mind to prove what you measure. The next situation you have to know is the diastolic dysfunction grade 2. In this case, we also have elevated feeling pressures, but we do have a more complex tree we have to follow. We have to start again with the mitral valve inflow. We have to have an E to A ratio above 0.8 until below 2, so 1.9. And the second situation, which can be is a E to A ratio below or 0.8, but an E wave of above 50 centimeters per second. After that, we have three criteria we have to evaluate. Those three criteria are the average E to E prime ratio. So we have to measure the maximal E velocity, the maximal E prime velocity, medial, lateral, so septal and lateral, and combine those two measurements, calculate the mean average E to E prime, TR velocity we have to measure. If it is above 2.8 meters per second, it is considered as pathological and we have to have a left atrial volume index above 34 milliliters per square meter. So here it is specifically noted that you have to measure the indexed volume of the left atrium. And in case if you have this three criteria and if two of the three criteria are positive, this is definitely diastolic dysfunction grade two. If you only can measure two criteria out of three, for example, the average E to E prime and the left volume index, and both are positive, this still is sufficient. It's then again diastolic dysfunction grade two. If you can measure all three and all three are positive, but we do not have a restrictive feeling, still it's the diastolic dysfunction grade two.